crafters and welcome back to the crafty Meraki YouTube channel my name is Deepa from designs by D and today I'm sharing some fun alcohol ink um, backgrounds and die cut pieces um, I wanted to show you two ways that you could use uh, the alcohol inks so um, we'll be creating two cards these are the products that we're going to be using I'll be focusing on the Athena Meraki Flora Paradise and the Scarlet Meraki Flora Paradise. So these are two of the floral dyes. There's a whole bunch of them that are in the Crafty Meraki store, but um, these are the two I'm going to use today. They are all gorgeous, so it's really up to you which one you want to choose. I've got some alcohol ink Yupo paper. This is just white cardstock. I've got some 90% alcohol. And then I've also got some pinata brass um, alcohol ink there. Then I've got a whole bunch of different colors of alcohol ink. You can see my tin here. I'm sorry for the glare off the tin. It'll go away in a second here. But um, if you don't have the pinata brass, you could always use the mixatives that um, are out with the alcohol inks as well. And um, I find that the mixatives, they're okay. I mean, they work well. They mix more with the alcohol ink. I find that the brass actually like creates like nice bits of uh, gold and brass in the um, in the image. Um, you can do so much more with it. It kind of collects. It's kind of it's kind of like the alloys rather than the mixatives. So I would give them all a chance if if you want to and play with them and see how they work differently. It's definitely an idea for. Um, some type of experimentation project. So you can see how all of the different mixatives and alloys and um, alcohol inks work. Maybe I can make one of those videos for you in the future. But for now, I've gone ahead and I've cut out the roses there. Um, I cut them out of the Yupo paper, okay? So I'm gonna add alcohol ink to that, but I'll do that later. So I've set those aside. I've just got one background piece. Now this panel, again, it's Yupo paper. It's four and a quarter by five and a half, and it's just the plain white cardstock. It's up to you. You could use, there's like an aluminum foil type. There's um, a transparent type. So you can use whichever type of Yupo you'd like. Now I'm just grabbing a bunch of alcohol ink colors. All of the colors are listed in the description below if you're wondering which ones I've used here. Um, my favorite is the one I just used. It's the Monsoon. It's like a really deep blue and I find that it really highlights brighter colors like the purple and the pink here very nicely. And I'm not really doing anything crazy. I, I'm just going with the flow and adding colors and, you know, just kind of moving them around with my air tool until it gets to where I like it and the panel becomes how I want it to look. Um, I always start off by adding some of the alcohol, the 90% alcohol to the panel, and then I add the alcohol ink so they move a little better. Um, alcohol ink panels, um, they're so great in the sense that you can put the ink down and move it around. And if say you don't like the panel, you could add more alcohol to it to move the color again and make it look a bit different. So there's no right or wrong way to do it. It's really just what you end up with and whether you like it or not. One um, technique that I really like is where you kind of drop a color and then drop the brass and then you kind of blow it out and then you drop more colors in it creating rings. Um, I didn't do that in this panel but it's a really cool technique that you could try. Once you've got down a lot of color you could also just kind of splash the panel with a bit of the alcohol ink and then it kind of moves in little bubbles. That's a really cool technique as well. So there's my panel done. As I said, I wasn't doing anything too specific. Now here we're going to get a little bit more specific. Now I know for some techniques they'll add alcohol ink to a panel and then die cut it, but then you can't control which color is going where on your die cut. So I like to die cut the Yupo paper, paper first. Now I'm adding some like really light, I think that's shell pink I have, to the rose portion of this die cut. And then I'll start adding the purple and the pinks and a little bit of the brass to kind of make sure I'm only adding that color to the petals. This way I can control, okay, I got my petals, a whole bunch of different colors of pinks and purples, and then I'm gonna keep my leaves and my stem green and blue, which are the colors that I'm gonna end up using. So this way I know exactly what color's going where. I don't have to worry about placing my dye 
you know, however, which way on my Yupo as I cut it out after I've added the ink. I just find that this te technique works better for me. Now, keep in mind, I'm just dropping the ink and blowing it. You could use a paintbrush and move it around. There's so many different ways that you can add the ink to get different effects. So really do, I mean, alcohol inks are like watercolors. There's something you have to experiment with. You're not going to kind of and that's that's the best thing about it because you can get so many different looks with just one product. I really like that aspect of it. So I've gone ahead and added, I think this is like a lagoon or as I said, <laughs> I'm just saying uh, names, but the main, the actual colors I've used are in the description below. So please don't take my word for it. Just check the description. That will have all of the most accurate information as to which products I used. And now I'm just adding a little bit of the brass just to kind of highlight this. I, I really like adding that gold and metallic touch to it. It looks really nice. As you can see, I'm just making sure that I've covered the entire die cut with the colors that I want. And then you really do have to set those aside to dry. So I did leave them overnight and I came back to them, especially because I added a lot of ink. It takes a little bit of time to dry. Now I'm going to grab the tulips here. Um, I think I can't remember the name. It's not the Scarlet. It's the other one. And I'm just going to cut out all of these tulips. This is really nice because it's one die that cuts out like five tulips in one go. So I've cut it out of some white cardstock. And then again, I'm going to cut it out of some gold mirror cardstock. Now, you'll see when I put it all together that the white is basically going to contrast with the alcohol ink background and then the gold just adds like a nice touch around the edge and gives it um, a really nice classy look so i'm going to grab my panel and then just cut it down a little i just cut a quarter of an inch from two of the sides the long and the short side so that i get a little bit of a border on my cardstock now this is just some plain white cardstock and i'm cutting two like long triangles and that's just because i wanted to make my card a little different i don't want to just add the background and add the flowers on top i wanted to add a little bit of a design so I'm going to add those triangles in the bottom and then the right corner. Um, I cut a strip of gold glitter cardstock kind of just to add on the edge along those triangles. It makes them stand out a little bit more and again contrast more off of the background. And then I'm just going to use some foam adhesive to attach these triangles. So it's going to give this card a little bit of depth. It's going to place that background really in the background. And then the flowers are more in the foreground, not only because they're white and they're going to contrast with the background, but because they're going to be lifted up with foam adhesive. So I've attached these two triangles, kind of like an opening that's kind of showing the alcohol ink there through the opening. And I've cut off the extra little bits at the end there because there were a little like spike sticking out in the corner. And now I'm just going to attach the white tulip on top of the gold tulip and I'm offsetting them so that you get a little bit of a gold outline and this just as I said it ties in with the background and gives it a nice look and I'm going to do that for all of the tulips so now that that's done I have attached them to the background um, not all of them some of them now before I go ahead and add the stems um, I'm I've cut out this hello die and I've cut it out of some gold car, uh, glitter cardstock and then some blue. And I thought the blue just went with that monsoon ink in the background. So I'll attach this there and that'll be our sentiment. <clears throat> so just so that I get an idea of where everything's gonna go, I'm kind of just placing things and making sure it works. And then I will adhere everything down. So that's generally my way of making cards. I don't always show it in all of my videos, but what I like to do is once I've got all of the elements, like my background, my foreground, my sentiment, I kind of just put it all together on the card before I actually adhere anything to make sure that it looks good or it's gonna look the way that I want it. And also it's a bit of a plan for when I do actually adhere everything. And that way, if I feel like it's not looking exactly how I want, I can always add something extra before I've actually attached everything, right? And then what I do is I remove it and then I'll actually adhere everything like I'm doing here. Now you can see the stems, I'm kind of cutting the bottoms and kind of just tucking it behind that bottom triangle. And I'm making sure that the tulips 
kind of meet with the stem at the top. And you'll notice that some stems are gold mirror and some are white. And that's just because, I don't know, I kind of went with it. I was initially going to layer them as I had done the tulips, but I thought that the variation in the different colors was enough. I didn't have to layer them. And then that was less die cutting as well, because I think that the the die with this set has three stems and you have five tulips right so if you want a stem for each tulip you'd have to cut it twice from each color and that's four times so instead of that I just cut it twice so hopefully that makes some sense to you it just kind of sped up the process a bit and I did the same thing for the leaves um, I cut some out of gold and some out of white just once each because it cuts a whole bunch in one go and then I'm just gonna I think I just stuck with the gold here. I just stuck with the gold leaves. So I had some extra left over, which I could keep for another project. So now that I've attached the hello, I can kind of stick the leaves in behind there and have, um, it, it kind of allows me to sort of just know exactly where everything's going before I put the leaves in to make sure they're going in the right place that kind of looks the best. So I'll stick those in there. Now, I don't know if you can see, but the leaves are actually cut from a different type of mirror cardstock. I didn't use the same type. And again, that was just to create a bit of variation. It's really up to you how you want to do that. You can stick with the same mirror cardstock. I'm going to go ahead now and finish this off with the um, illusion gems here. Again, <laughs> the proper name is in the description below. And you can see it's like a really nice pinky purple color. So it picks up that background nicely. Now moving on to the second card, we're going to do the opposite. So the last one, we put the alcohol ink in the background. This time, the alcohol ink is going to be on the foreground on the die cuts. Okay, so I've gone ahead and I've cut some light pink cardstock with the Parisian Mini Slimline die from Crafty Meraki. Um, I'm kind of just placing it on an eight and a half by 11 piece of white cardstock because I wanted a bit of white on either side to make this more of a normal sized card. And then I'm just using that panel as a guide to cut down my, um, my card base. Now you'll see this card is completely weird. It's, it's an abnormal shape. No, sorry, not an abnormal shape. It's an abnormal size. So if you're going to have an envelope for this, you're going to have to make your own envelope. And, you know, I probably should put a video on in here on envelopes because there are ways that you can produce your own envelopes from envelopes that you have already just by altering the size or you can produce them from scratch. So, um, yeah, or you could always just put this in an envelope that's a little bit larger and there'll be a bit of space around it. That's completely fine, too. So just like the last card where I added a strip of gold glitter adhesive um, on those two like slivers of triangles, I did that the same on either side of the Parisian panel here. And I've attached that to the card base. So we've got a nice background going here. And now it's just a matter of arranging those uh, floral die cuts. Now, I also have the Handmade Love um, foil plate and die. I just gave you a quick look at what that is there. It basically cuts, um, you can foil a whole bunch of sentiments and cut them all out with a one piece die in one go. Um, I have done this like a while ago and had these kind of on the side there. So um, I just kind of grabbed one of the sentiments to use here. So I didn't actually have to foil and cut them again. That's what I like to do. A lot of the Merak Crafty Meraki sets, especially the EAPs and stuff, you can cut a whole bunch of sentiments, foil sentiments, cut them. You can cut all those EAPs. You can cut them all ahead of time and just kind of keep them in containers. And then when it comes to making cards, say you need a quick card here and there, it's just a matter of putting everything together because it's already, you know, foiled and cut for you. So that that's definitely an idea for prepping for cards if you'd like to do that too. So I've got the two main roses down. I'm trying to stick the last one in there in between because it's a bit of a smaller bud. And then I'm just going to put that made with love sentiment in the bottom. So that was actually foiled with just plain black um, foil. And then I cut that out there on white cardstock. And that's pretty much it for this card. You just have to add some bling. I'm going to use some um, ivory opal gems here. Um, and that's pretty much it. So once I get those on with my 
trusty bling buddy there my card is complete so I actually really like the way this card turned out with the alcohol ink on the die cuts it's definitely a technique I'd use again I hope that this either one of these techniques is something that you'd use for your cards in the future everything that I've used is linked in the description below as I mentioned multiple times in this video so don't forget to check that out and um please don't forget to like and subscribe. We love to see you here for future videos and future tutorials. So I hope that you guys have enjoyed this video. Don't forget to leave a comment down below if you have anything to say. We'll be sure to get back to you and have a great weekend. Bye.